Hello everyone and welcome to Crafting with Delanda. It's me again, Delanda. And thank you so much for joining me today. Hopefully you are returning because you've already seen part one of our two-part series. In part one, if you did not get a chance to check it or watch it, I talked about the setup of the DTF printer. I talked about purchasing the right table, having a dedicated space. I went through how to set up the and install the software and the ink. I talked about the importance of having a dedicated computer. I talked about all the things that you will need to know before you actually make a purchase of a DTF printer. Now, let me say again, as a disclaimer, I am not an expert on that printer or this printer, this DTF printer that is right here behind me. I have some examples of shirts that I've done as DTF sublimation hacks. I will definitely make sure to leave a link to those tutorials below this video. I have had a lot of success with the sublimation DTF hacks. However, we are not talking about that. We're talking about this printer right here. In today's tutorial, I am going to show you my exact printer settings and we're going to go through all the steps of using the powder, using the film, printing, uh, on the film pressing on the shirt at the end of the video you will see that this is the, the design that I was able to put on the shirt what you'll know about this is that with the DTF printer it does have white ink and that is one of the major differences between doing the actual DTF process and using a hack because now even though this came out nice and vibrant and this shirt has been washed several times I think at least 10 times by now this shirt this design does not have any white ink in it okay so at the end of this video if you find it helpful please consider liking the video subscribing to my channel and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week now without further ado let's get started the materials I'm going to use for this project include this L1800 DTF printer, this Welliser DTF film. The size of this film is A3. I'm using the Welliser DTF powder. This printer came with this oven. I'll be using the oven. My computer is a Lenovo laptop. You do not have to purchase this brand, but you will need a computer that has a Windows-based operating system. There is a workaround. I do not know how to do that. I will be downloading my files from Creative Fabrica, and my heat press is the StarCraft Clamshell 15 by 15. My shirt is a black 100% cotton gildan shirt. Without further ado, Let's get started. I am currently on the Creative Fabrica website. I am a yearly all access subscriber. And what that means is I was billed one time for $59, which equates to about $5 per month. However, I was billed one time and my subscription will be renewed again at the end of my year. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just do a search for a 4th of July butterfly. Okay, and the reason why I'm doing a search for a 4th of July butterfly is because I just like crafting and finding beautiful butterflies. So the file that I'm going to use is actually this one right here. It's called 4th of July butterfly sublimation PNG. And what I'm going to do is download this file. Now, with the Creative Fabrica yearly all access subscription, I do have access to this file. I have commercial access and full print on demand usage, which means that if I were to place this butterfly on a shirt, I could sell it. Now, I cannot sell the image. However, I can create something and put the image on it to sell. Okay, so I'm going to get this downloaded and let me show you that process. So if you look at the bottom left corner of my screen, it gives me the option to download. I'm going to click open. Now right here at the top of my screen, what I have to do is extract the files in order for them to be available 
on my computer. And even though I've already extracted and downloaded them, I'm just going to demonstrate the process in this tutorial. So I'm going to click extract all. I'm going to click browse. And then I'm just going to go over here to my documents and I have a crafting folder right here. I have a file for my creative fabric of files and I am going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it 4th of July butterfly. Okay. And I'm just going to click that folder. I'm going to click select folder. And then when the files are extracted, they will go directly into that folder. So I'm going to click extract. Okay. And so now all eight of those files, I believe there are eight. Let me see. One, two, three, four. There are nine. Um, all nine of those files are there. And what I'll do now is go into the RIP software and show you how I am going to get the file resized and printed. And this is where I will show you my printer settings. Okay, so let's go into the RIP software. We are in the RIP software. And what I'm going to do is open the file that I just downloaded from Creative Fabrica. So I'm going to go to file. I'm going to click open. And I'm going to navigate to where I have that file saved. Remember, it was in a crafting folder, Creative Fabrica Files, 4th of July Butterfly. It is this one, number three, right here. Now that I have the file coming in, it's going to take a moment. I'm going to show you what my printer settings look like when I print this. Okay, so let's look over here at this right panel. Let's go to the layout tab first. Now with the layout tab, and we're going to look at all of this, but let's look at the layout tab first. These settings were not really set up by me. One night when I was printing, I was having a hard time. Uh, one of the representatives from the company connected to my computer and they set these settings up for me and I just haven't changed them. Okay, but let's look at them. All right, so right here in the layout tab at the top, you have the option to have your image in the top left, top right, center, um, directly in the center vertically, um, or just the center of the page. You can rotate the image. I'm going to go back. All right, or you can even mirror the image right here. Now it's hard to tell that I've mirrored this because it is a butterfly and of course, butterflies are symmetrical right here for where it says paper width. I just keep this set right here at paper width of 300 millimeters by 420 millimeters. Now these settings are um, in millimeters. You can convert yours or change yours to inches with this size. This is appropriate for the A3 size film. The output size only changes when you change the size of the image. So if you're looking right here at the output size, you can see that I can make my image bigger and that would change the numbers here. Or if I make the image smaller, that also changes the numbers. Right here where it says equal proportion, keep that on true. X and Y are at one. Distribute top to top. Um, I would have that on spacing and then the x spacing and y spacing was at 350 by 450 and the pattern is normal okay let me make sure okay yeah it's on normal all right so now let's look at the next option down here which is printer now for my printer it is the l1800 this right here where it says port this just represents where i have the usb connected to the laptop where it says check paper size, keep that at off because you will change the paper size on the actual printer itself when you're navigate making adjustments to uh, the alignment. Resolution should be at 1440 by 720 DPI. If you have this exact same printer, the feeding is on sheet because this one doesn't have a roll. You'll see when I put the film in. For speed, I, I had mine set to um, unit direction L, which is left, is greater than right, okay? And then the wave should be off, 
Okay, I'm making all these changes so I can show you how to do yours and then you can save them if you want yours to match mine. White dot size and color dot size should be both set to medium plus large. Now we're going to the third option, which is color. Okay, right here for user defined print setting, I am going to change that. You don't have to. Now you can see I've played around with this a little bit because I've changed it to Delanda's DTF. I've changed it to DTF 1800. I've changed it to a lot of different ones. This one right here, DTF 1800 June 2023 is the exact setting that I use every time because those are the settings that they set for me. Okay. So right here where it says ink limit mine, I just, they changed it to 75. Now this does not match what is in the printed manual, nor does it match what is in the video manual that you will receive. You can change yours to match that. And if you want to do that, what is in the printed manual right here actually says 40 okay but i'm not going to put mine on 40 i'm going to keep it right there at 75. right here i i changed all well they changed all of these to 80 and right here for this ink this one right here this white ink um this just stayed at 70 percent okay for input and output, both of those are at zero. Brightness is at 100. Contrast is also at 100. The ICC profile should be set to off, okay? So it was set to on in the manual, but when they connected to my computer, they changed it to off. So I just kept it off. All right, so we're finished with the third tab, which is the color management tab. Let's look at the fourth tab, which is white. Right here where it says white layer generation, the setting should be set to 100% white under any colored pixel. White ink curve, both of these are set to 0%. Black detect threshold is at 100%. Remove black ink is not checked. Right here, if I want to view the white ink, this is what it, this is what my image will look like. This is what it looks like in color. And this is kind of like what a print preview would look like. OK, so I keep mine on color. All right. And then set material color for preview. I have not played around with that. White channel setting should be set to 0, 0.0. And then when they connected to my computer, they changed all of these uh, settings right here to zero. So all of these at the top and bottom are at zero and at the left and right, they're both at zero, except white only is unchecked. And right here where it says decrease, uh, they kept that there and I did not make any changes to that. So we've looked at everything over here in the right panel. Let's look at this top panel you have the option for file you saw how i brought the file in i just clicked open and i navigated to it um, right here is edit you can this pretty much does the same thing that you can see when you, over here in layout that's exactly what you have right here in edit top left top right top horizontal center vertical center center you have the option to rotate right here for language mine is of course set to english um, and for view you can view the um, grid or not. You can uncheck that. There is an option right here for a template. They have like what is considered, I guess, kind of like a t-shirt template. I have not played around with this at all, so I'm not even going to do it right now. All right. And I am going to click cancel right here. And then um, you can have it on show template and it'll bring a red line. See that red line that just showed up? Now, I don't keep that on, so I'm not going to keep it on now. All right, so we've looked at everything at the top. Now over here in the left where it says file, I have the option to open, reload, close. So if I want to close out this file and open another file, or if I just want to open a second butterfly file, I could also do that. I could set up the page margins. Right here is where you would change it from millimeters to inches. Um, I'm just going to keep mine on millimeters. You can change yours if you feel the need. Um, for printer spool, I have not played around with that. For nozzle check and head cleaning, you will need to do both of those daily. Right here is where you can change the size, the print out size revision. I have not played around with that, but I am going to show you something. Uh, dry mode, I have not played around with that. And right here is where you would actually click to print. Now, before I click to print this, let me show you something. 
So let's just say, for example, I did not want to print on the A3 size, which is the larger of the film sizes. Let's just say I wanted to print on the A4 size, which is 210 by 297 millimeters. What I would do up here is I would just change this to 210. Okay, and then I could change this to uh, 297. 297. Okay, and that would um, actually make my paper size smaller, which means I would need to make the butterfly image a lot smaller. Now, of course, I don't want to do that. I don't want to have a much smaller butterfly, but I wanted you to see what it looks like for you to change the paper size. So if you want to change the paper size, you can just change it right here. All right, so I'm going to take mine back to that um, 300 by the 420, okay? All right, and see how much smaller my butterfly is. I'm gonna just make it big like it was, all right? Okay, and now we are ready to print. So now that I'm ready, I will click File, and I will click Print, and then what I would do here is I can just kind of make sure all everything matches, but really it definitely should. All of this should match the settings that you have in the right panel. So I would click right here for a print color first, and then I would check right here under color setting. I'm not going to change anything else just here at color setting. And I would change this to one and then I would check white plus color and then i would click print okay now if you do this and you get an error message that says you know uh error file error that just means you need to go back and turn off your antivirus software typically when i'm not able to print or i get an error it is because the antivirus software has turned back on because remember i said mine turns on automatically okay so if i click print and i don't get an error and it starts to like show like that is scrolling across the page that means it's going to print i'm going to click cancel because i've already have this ready to print and i'll do everything from here back on the camera I have the film inserted right here in this back tray and it is going to start the process of adding the ink and this whole process it kind of does take a while I'm, I have not timed it yet maybe this is the perfect time for me to time it but if I open it up you can see that the printer um, I don't know if that's what that's called but it's going back and forth across the film Okay, so my image is finished printing. This is, look at how gorgeous this is. Oh my goodness. I have the image right here. This is the Welliser film, and I'm also using the Welliser powder. This is a fine powder. So I'm gonna pour a generous amount. As you can see, it's used, I've used a lot of it, uh, but I always pour the excess back into the bag. Okay, I'm just gonna pour it on. And I like to pour a generous amount. Other crafters may do it differently. This is how I do it. Make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. You might even want to wear gloves. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna leave the bag open. Just gonna go over the image. I'm making sure that the powder is fully coated on the image. Just by rolling it back and forth. And you'll be able to tell if it's on there good enough. You have to do this while the ink is still wet. Shake off the excess. Okay, You can see that it's on there. You can look and see that it's dark. But once I put it in the oven, you'll be able to see it even better because you'll be able to tell once it's cured. Let's move back over to the oven. This oven is still heating up. I'm going to do 120 degrees Celsius for 90 seconds. I'm just gonna slide it in here just like this. And I just kind of keep a little piece of it hanging off so I can grab it easily. So I'll speed this part up, but it's 120 degrees Celsius for 90 seconds. 
So when the timer goes off, it definitely does beep loud. You can just press this to stop it or and you can power it off if you're not going to use it anymore. Okay, so I didn't even let it go all the way up to the, the right temperature. But now like, look at how thick the powder is on the butterfly. If you can see it has like a gloss to it. Now it's time to get this pressed on my shirt. The shirt that I'm going to use is a Gildan Heavy Cotton Large. And I have my heat press set to 345 degrees for 30 seconds. I'm going to get a crease down the middle of my shirt. I'm just going to do a five second press on that part. I have a crease down the middle of my shirt. Now I'm going to place the shirt on the heat press. And I am going, now I could have cut all of this away, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to place it here in the middle. And I'm using the symmetry of the butterfly to know where the middle is. I'm going to place a sheet of Teflon on top or a Teflon sheet. And I'm going to press this with heavy pressure for 30 seconds. All right. What I'm going to do now is remove this from the heat press and I'm going to just let it cool down. I'm gonna let it cool down for about two minutes. Okay, this has completely cooled down and you can see the film is still on the shirt. I'm gonna put it back on my heat press. I really should have cut that excess off, but it's okay. Now I'm gonna just peel the film away If you do this and any part of your design starts to lift up, just press it again. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is get parchment paper and I'm going to press this again. This time, same process. Instead of Teflon, I'm using parchment. And in my opinion, parchment paper seals the deal. Let me show you what it looks like without the parchment paper first. Okay, so this is without the second press of the parchment paper. Okay, let's do a press with the parchment paper and I'm gonna just tell you, I'm already in love. <laughs> I love it already, okay? I'm gonna press this on 345 for 30 seconds. Okay. Oh my, oh, <laughs> I love it so much. Oh my goodness, look at that. Look at that. Look at how vibrant it is. It is super, it's hot, super soft. It's gonna stretch nicely. Look at that. Look, look, look at that. It is gorgeous. It is absolutely gorgeous gorgeous so that's the benefit of having a dtf printer is that you are not limited to color you're not limited to fabric type you're not limited at all really you're not even limited with the size because as long as you have a film big enough you can print your image and it is going to come out fantastic and it feels soft it's going to wash nicely I just love it. I love it so much. If you have found this series of videos helpful, please consider liking the video, subscribing to my channel, and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. Thank you so much for joining me today. And thanks for watching. Bye.